Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So in the last video, we created the template that's on the screen. Now we're going to use this template to talk to the Ethereum blockchain and take a look at some blocks. Now, since this is the Ethereum blockchain, we can view all of this data on etherscan.io or any other Ethereum block explorer. So on etherscan.io, if we go to the main page, we see latest blocks. And if we click into this block, we'll actually see information about it, such as it was mined by Ethermine. There was a block reward of two Ether. And we have things like your burnt fees, which I assume that's for EIP-1559, which initiated burnt fees for each time that the uh, blocks are being produced, it burns a certain amount of Ethereum. Um, it also shows the gas that was used in here, and it shows stuff like how many transactions. There was 91 transactions within this particular block. And this is block 15026741. So this is cool, and we can view this by browsing the website. But what if we actually need to use this data within a program? We need to pull this data back programmatically, and that's where ethers.js comes in or web3.js, which we used before. So if we hop back into our editor and we copy our previous code from our template, because we want to reuse that, let's create a new file and let's call this file inspectblocks.js. So within inspectblocks.js, let's paste our code in here. And now we have everything we need to get started. So we're gonna change the function name and we're gonna say inspect block, since that's meaningful to this function and we need to call that. So we'll say inspect block. And now we can call this function. So I'm gonna minimize this thing so we can see all the code. And then within this inspect block function we're calling, we need to actually call the block. So again, if we need to figure out how to do that, you can search on Google and find people who are showing you how to do it, or you can go into the ethers documentation, right? So right under where we looked at the JSON RPC provider before, there's querying the blockchain. And we can see stuff like get block number, um, we can get balances, we can format our ether, there's various things. So we can look up all the things we wanna do within this documentation. So for example, this get block number. Let's do that. And you're seeing they're using that same await statement and they're using that provider variable we created before. That's why we have this template now. We can just reuse everything, right? So let's call this our block number. So we'll say block block number. And what we will do is we will say provider dot get block number because that's what we saw in the documentation, right? So now we have a variable block number which has the actual block number in it, but we need to actually be able to see that back to our screen. So let's log that out to our console. So if you remember from previous tutorials in JavaScript, we can log this out via console.log. Also, you'll notice if you were ever doing any kind of hacking in your browser and you were doing some debugging while you were doing some web hacking, you might've used console.log within that as well. It also has that same JavaScript engine within your browser. So we can say console.log and we'll say backtick. So that way we can put um, the actual variables within the backtick and have those um, displayed instead of the literal values we're putting in there. So we'll say block number and that's the actual text we want but then the actual variable we want to print out will be our block number from above that we just named that and that's going to have to be within the brackets with a dollar sign in front so let's also do a new line after that okay so we have going on here right now is we have provider, which allows us to connect to the blockchain via our URL. And we're going to grab the block number from the blockchain and assign that block number to a block number variable. Now, in order to display that block number variable, we're going to say console.log and we're going to say the text block hash. 
And then to see the actual variable printed out, we do a dollar sign and throw the variable within the brackets. And then we just put a new line after it, so we have a new line after. Okay, so this should run. If we go to our console and make sure we are in the correct directory, I believe mine is on my desktop. Um, desktop, and then we're gonna go CC, nope, um, ethers, CC. And that should have in there. So we got our inspect blocks.js. We can do this with node. So node inspect blocks.js. And looks like we have an error here. And oh, cannot find module.env. So maybe I didn't install that. npm install.env. And we'll wait for that to install. So now let's give that a try again. And it says module not found again. So I didn't have either of these installed. So I'll install ethers. And this is how you troubleshoot your problems as well. I could take this out of here, but this will help you because you'll be like, hey, what does this error mean? It's very simple. Just scroll up and read what it's saying, right? So in this particular case, it had said that we had a module not found. We scrolled up and it said, hey, cannot find module ethers. So what did we do? We just installed with NPM ethers. And now it should work because those are the only two modules we technically should need. So now we do that. And we have another error that says, on open and I think that is related to our actual export. So let me do that really quick. I'm gonna pause the video and do my export. Yep, so that's exactly what that was. I just had to do my export in Fura underscore WS or whatever I called it within that uh, code within here. So we had in Fura underscore WS so for that particular error, we just needed to do the export. So once that's done, now it should work. So probably what happens is I had a new directory and when you install NPM without a minus G, it installs it into that local directory. So if I LS right now, you're gonna see a node modules directory. And within those node modules, we'll go in here and it has the stuff that we installed, right? So that's the stuff that we just installed. And if you'll see the package.json, you'll see we now have ethers and .env. So if we actually took this to a new computer now, um, we could actually just uh, do an npm install within the directory and it would install all of the dependencies from our package.json. Hopefully that's just helpful info. I had a brand new directory when we were setting that up. So even though I had installed this before for myself, I didn't install it globally and I need to reinstall it in this directory. I'm gonna leave this in this video because it'll help you with your troubleshooting. But anyway, we can now actually run our program. So now we say node inspect blocks.js and it should bring back our block. So our current block number is 150.26775, perfect. And if we actually look up that block on the blockchain, we should be able to look that up right on Etherscan. So go black to Etherscan, we type in, should be able to just do that. And here is our block. And here's the information within our block. This happened 54 seconds ago, had 122 transactions. So, that's how to grab the block number, but then how do we actually get information about that block, right? So we can now hop back into our inspect blocks and let's print that out right after, right? So let me minimize this so we have some more room. Okay, so now let's create another variable. So we'll say const and we'll call this block info. And we'll say await again, because we're gonna need to wait for this to come back from the blockchain. So we'll say provider. And we'll say get block. And what we can do is we can just feed the block number that we're getting back directly into our script. 
So we say block number, and then we can print out the data from that. So we say console dot log block info. So super simple. You know, I'm trying to keep this easy for new coders as well. Um, this shouldn't be your first coding tutorial, but just so it's very, very clear because I see a lot of tutorials about Ethereum stuff and they move really fast and it's kind of hard to follow if you haven't coded like this before, especially using like async, await, and all of that stuff within the JavaScript. So super simple. We created a new variable. We said, hey, let's wait for the provider to grab the block and we're gonna grab that block number. And then we're just gonna print out the block info that we put into that variable from that block number. So now what should happen is we should see our block number printed out, and then we should see the block info right after that. And since we have that new line, it should come underneath the block number. So let's actually try this out now. And we'll say node inspect block.js. And we have our block info. So I'm going to scroll up a bit. These, I believe, are all the transaction hashes from our actual block, if I'm guessing right. Yep, so here's all the transactions. And here's our block number. Here's the timestamp when it happened. Here's the nounce that was used. Um, here's the miner that posted that. And here's the block number. So if we look up that block number, we can probably correlate that data, right? So we have block number 150.26789. And we said that there was, um, let's see. Well, we can check how many transactions there actually are. So let's take a look really quick. We'll post this in here. And we actually have 100 transactions printed out right here. Pretty cool, right? So the next thing we're gonna check out in the next video is we're gonna start looking at some of these transactions and add to our actual thing. So catch you in the next video. Hopefully this is useful and is kind of getting you used to using asynchronous programming, pulling stuff back, logging it out, correlating the data via the web page and getting a better handle on things, especially with some more knowledge about blocks from the previous video. All right, so uh, hopefully you learned something. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff and share it with your friends.